Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the this session of the Digital Trust Summit. Uh, my name is Kevin. I'll be the Zoom host today, and I'm happy to introduce uh, Tina, Shannon, and Jen, who will be presenting uh, on rethinking technology. Uh, additionally, I leave the pocket. Technology investment and leveraging zero trust. Um, remember to stay connected and use our uh, hashtag digital trust summit uh, on any media that you'll be posting and uh, engage in conversation. The chat function is on and uh, the Slack is available. Uh, over to you, Tina. Perfect. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, welcome all. I'm excited to uh, to be here and um, you know hope looking forward to next year when. Um, when there might be more opportunities to do things, do things in person. All right, Kevin, I was getting a little bit of feedback. But if you say we're good to go, I'll keep going here. I think we're good to go. It's just you and Jen now. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And uh, let, let's make sure um, yeah, that uh, that Shannon has the ability to come off mute as well. So, so um, I do. You know, uh, good afternoon and welcome to today's session: Rethinking Technology Investments, Leveraging Zero Trust. Um, I'm Tina Thorstenson, Executive Strategist for CrowdStrike, and uh, starting last year, I launched a second career. But before that, I had you know 25 plus years in higher education. Most recently, as the Deputy CIO and CISO for Arizona State University. So it's fun to be back um, in this session. We're going to focus on cyber resiliency and really how we can drive innovation across our organizations. And uh, you know, some, some of that's through minimizing disruption, but some of that is really a lot of the technology innovation we're seeing is, uh, it is through a cybersecurity lens. So you know, we, we believe that cyber resili resiliency really is a game of speed, and we'll get into that more in this session since one of the best ways to, uh, to learn is through storytelling, I've invited two leaders uh, from the Arizona community. I'm Jen with the state of Arizona and Shannon with the city of Phoenix to join today's conversation and uh, also you know, share their recent journey uh, through, through this uh, last year or so and also their plans moving forward. As we go along today, uh, feel free to drop you know, questions, comments, ideas into the, the chat and we'll pick them up as we go. And then um, um, in anything else we'll cover off at, at the end when we open it up for questions. So as we start off, I wanna give a, first Jen a chance to introduce herself, share just a, a moment uh, of her, her background, and then we'll move to Shannon. Jen, take it away. Yep. Thanks, Tina. I'm Jen Dvorak. I'm the information security uh, architect for the state of Arizona Department of Administration, soon to be Department of Homeland, Arizona Department of Homeland Security Cyber Command. So. We're moving um, more on that later. Uh, I'm also the law enforcement liaison uh, with our counterterrorism center, the Fusion Center. And I work really closely with all the state agencies on ensuring secure architectures and uh, rolling out of security solutions enterprise-wide. Thanks so much, Jen. All right, and on to you, Shannon. Um, hi there, I'm Shannon Lawson. I am the uh, CISO and the Chief Privacy Officer for the uh, City of Phoenix. My job is rather dull. There's not a whole lot going on. Uh, happy to be here and answer any questions. No, it, it, uh, City of Phoenix is, 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 quite, um, is, is quite the beast. Uh, we have 30 departments um, running everything from getting water to everybody in Phoenix during 118 degree days to running the airports in Phoenix Sky Harbor uh fire police um and and everything in between uh servicing 1.7 million and counting as the mass exodus from california occurs <laughs> okay and and on that note um we'll uh we'll jump into it Th thanks for for everyone joining us uh today and um um and as we, as we dive in, you know, I spend quite a bit of time talking with CIOs and CISOs, and uh, you know, I've noticed some emerging themes, and it's really how we framed up today's conversation. You know, first off is I hear from leaders, um, and some of the leaders even uh, joining us today, that uh, what they really wish is they want to be able to sleep better at night, and they want their weekends back. Um, I, I heard it again, uh, you know, a couple times already this week, and here it's only Wednesday. So, you know, we've been on a mission 
Um, and I personally have been on a mission to accomplish this very thing um, for a little while now. And uh, you know, at Crossstrike, we say we're on a mission to stop breaches and we're super passionate about uh, that. So as, as we dive into this session, um, Shannon, we're, I'm gonna kick it over to you first, but um, in, in many ways, this, this last year has been a pretty wild ride. So um, Shannon, why don't you start off by telling us a few of your recent successful initiatives? Um, okay, yeah, so this year has been pretty interesting, uh, this past year. Um, uh, but uh, for for me, you know, it was um, it's just sort of another day. Uh, you know, be, having a former military background, we're just sort of used to sort of um, catastrophes and and emergencies and and going to battle stations and and so this to me was just sort of okay. It, it we're just doing that all over again. Uh, so, but one of the, the we did, we actually had several successes uh, this past year. So I try to look. You know, a lot of people will harp on you know, um, you know, the, the, the pandemic and, and the virus and, you know, the sky is falling kind of a thing. And, and I, I thought there were some really good sil silver linings and everything. So we were able to get, um, you know, uh, CrowdStrike deployed throughout our environment. Um, you know, we started this actually in, in 2019, but it's taken a little bit of time uh, to, to get everything going again, 30 departments and thousands of endpoints. So, uh, so for us, this was a this was a huge success. Uh, and when when everybody took off to go home um, to stay, you know, you know, 60 miles away from uh, the next the next living soul, uh, this helped uh, to make sure our endpoints were as as secure as possible. Um, another really cool success we had, um, and I think this is probably the biggest one. Uh, so I talked to law and some other departments to to allow us to do the uh, CrowdStrike. Um, uh, incident response retainer and that was a big deal at the city like no one's had ever really done that before which is interesting because they have the you know the microsoft um uh ea and the, and, the, and the cisco contract and that's sort of all built in there if you actually read sort of their their fine print but uh i said we really need something like this and then sure enough uh you know they're like well what do you mean chan you know we're just giving money away no 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 we're not this is this is really good because if if the proverbial you know stuff sort of hits the fan uh, who is going to save us, right? Uh, who, where, where are those shock troops to come in to help battle out with, uh, with a breach? And and so, lo and behold, we have solar winds. And um, so we used uh, our incident response retainer uh, to help. Um, not that we felt that we were um, compromised by um, either of the bears, uh, the the, you know, the the grizzly bear or the panda bear. Uh, mm -hmm. But we wanted to make sure that we had a kind of clean bill of health. And, uh, and if it wasn't for that, um, you know, I, I had heard that CrowdStrike was quite busy after solar winds hit. And Just if you did not have this, if you did not have this retainer, uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot they can do to help you uh, because the backlog was so significant. So uh, I really felt like we, you know, not not just sort of dodged a, a bullet. Uh, I've, I've been using the term we dodged a meteor that came within like 200 miles of the Earth, uh, not a meteor, an asteroid. And uh, and that could have been really devastating to the city. So when we talk about breaches, we also talk about you know these other things like solar winds. And uh, so we couldn't be more happy with um, you know what we got with uh, with CrowdStrike. And um, so we're we're pretty happy about that. Um, so back to you. All right. Well, thank thank you, Shannon. So so uh, so Jen, tell us a little bit what's been going on at the state. Yeah, I mean, we had a similar experience to Shannon. Um, everyone was sent home. Uh, we were right in the middle of our CrowdStrike deployment. So having an endpoint protection that also offered remote management capabilities was huge for us. Um, we were used to going out and actually having to physically touch devices or making sure that they have um, accessible ways to get uh, access to them. But with CrowdStrike, it was an all-in-one product. So that was huge for us. We completed our rollout probably, I think October, um, 36,000 endpoints. And we also utilize the MDR functionality. And that has been huge for us because that 24 by seven monitoring, it really was a force multiplier for our small SOC team where they're actually calling through all the logs that are collected um, on the endpoints. So, um, one of the things that we were able to identify was um, 
pulse secure vulnerabilities within our agencies that we weren't aware of. We weren't even aware that they were using pulse secure VPNs. Um, so with the MDR team alerting us, we were able to remediate some endpoints that were in the field with a completely different agency um, before anything terrible happened. Um, and just a lot of misconfigurations that when people took their computers home, it was like the wild west, like they were plugging directly into routers and all kind of stuff. And we didn't, we never saw that before. And even if it is a different agency, I mean, I work for DOA, but it still reflects poorly on the state of Arizona. It's still an incident or a breach for the state of Arizona. So we're really just, I'm trying to help my boss, the state CISO Tim Romer sleep well at night and not have his name in the paper in a bad way. Um, and CrowdStrike really helped us um, get to that get to that point so far. I mean, knock on wood, but um, there were some things that we found that we had no idea. So, so thanks, Jen and uh, and Shannon for your for your comments. So we're going to pivot just just a little bit, but uh, you guys have already um, kind of opened the door for this piece of the conversation. You know, it. You know, one of the things I'm you know, super passionate about is um, you're driving success more rapidly. And you guys had, I mean, phenomenal years in terms of you know, moving the needle significantly with your, um, your organizations and certainly uh, cyber programs as well. So, so, you know, as we move so rapidly towards this, these new initiatives, having the bidir uh, bidirectional alignment between organizations, agencies, and their technology partners just seems like it's you know, increasingly important. And it's going beyond just purchasing a software, uh, you know, uh, or a piece of technology. So in a time when every minute counts, and uh, you, we had some interesting elections, right, Shannon, last year that, that uh, um, you know, ha had us um, really, you know, focused on making sure we had, uh, you know, good uh, cyber protections um, in place. And, you um, um, you coupling all of those things with making every dollar count, right? We don't have, you know, there there aren't you know dollars falling from the sky, right? We have to figure out how to move from our legacy technology systems, you know, to the newer, more innovative technologies to support everything going on at our organization. So, and and then you add ransomware to that, right? Uh, so so this this uh, better together story um, is something I wanted to uh, have each one of you comment on a little bit. How have you seen things change with your technology partners? And uh, yeah, kind of what are, you, what are you expecting from, from them now? And uh, Jen, I'll, I'll uh, throw this one to you first. Sure. So our, part of our strategic vision for our information security program is to hold vendors accountable. And I think what that means is that we want more vendor partners. We want you to come on our journey with us. We don't want to just be buying a product from you and you disappear. We really want someone who's looking out for the best interest of the state of Arizona and also the constituents. Um, and additionally, we're looking for more platform-based products because we don't, we don't necessarily wanna be buying piecemeal products anymore. We want a platform that we can add pieces to as we need them um, and consolidate vendors. I think one of the problems in the state government is that we have a lot of vendors that we work with and there's a lot of finger pointing. And when you go to more of a platform-based solution, um, it really makes it easier that you have one partner that you're working with who's looking out for you and who is um, you know, just providing you a lot more service than just one at a time solutions. Well, thanks for that. Uh, Shannon, what do you have to add? Um, well, I would echo what, what uh, Jen said. Um, we definitely have to keep vendors, uh, hold them accountable. Um, and I think just across government in general, that government, again, in general, whether it's federal, state, or local, has a hard time doing that. Um, and I just think, I think it's just simply because if you kind of come up in the, in the government sector, you just, you, you just don't know how to do it. Uh, but if you're with private sector, there's a little bit more, you know, they kind of teach you how you're supposed to be doing this and you have a little bit more discretion, but as a, as a government entity, not, not so much, uh, and, that, and that's not to say like every person's like that, but that, that happens. Um, so, so Jen and I are in alignment. We definitely keep vendors accountable. Um, and we've, and I've been pretty active in that space, probably to the dismay of some, 
Um, but where Jenna, I think I, we might, her and I might just uh, separate kind of our, our line of thinking just a little bit. Um, I, I take more of a, a of an approach of what is best of breed. You know, what what is the solution that works for us? Um, so there's there's definitely some pros in trying to get in a you know to get a platform. Uh, but I've also been in environments where you're sort of uh, swallowing the vendor's ecosystem hook, line, and sinker. And nothing could be further from the truth than like, you know, something like the Fed's HBSS uh, host space security system, which is code for, you know, McAfee's EPO. And that's something that it was just, it was, it was, it was problematic for us uh, in, 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 in the Fed space and in the state space. And when I was a CISO state of Alaska. And so it just, as that, that kind of an example, sometimes, Sometimes those platform systems just don't work too well unless you have like an army of people to 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 handhold it and feed the beast and and make it work. Uh, and then so for us, you know, we look at uh, and, and again, you know, sometimes like you know, CrowdStrike we worked really well for us, but you might go to another organization and and then you know, CrowdStrike might not be the the best solution or or Proofpoint might not be the best solution. And maybe if you're a really small mom and pop shop you know, maybe having the Microsoft ecosystem is actually probably your best bet because you're not so much of a target and, and cost is a consideration and, and, and so forth like that. Uh, so when we look at, um, when we look at vendors, you know, we're, uh, it is, it is, for me, it is rare that a vendor become, goes from vendor to true partner, right? CrowdStrike has, has met that with me. Um, so uh, all the people that I've dealt with with uh, CrowdStrike are, are, are on speed dial on my phone. And, um, and I can't say that for a lot of the other vendors. Proofpoint is another one that has made it into that, that, that category of sort of maybe Olympic medals. Maybe we could refer to it as Olympic medals of vendors. <laughs> and, um, like and, but I'm not going to say who's got the gold. I mean, you guys are all equal, right? Uh, and then, you know, there's a couple of other vendors too that, that have, have gotten there. We have really good success with RSA uh, for our, our um, multi-factor authentication. And, uh, and so we really look for, you know, who's, we, we, we frequently will get into a situation where vendors, they know everything and they don't want to hear what we have to say. And, and I get it. Sometimes, you know, vendors might, you know, especially dealing with, with government, you know, sometimes they're probably used to, you know, okay, well, people don't know what they're talking about or whatever, but you know, in our particular situation, you know, I'm ensuring that my team does know what they're talking about and we prep beforehand. And so when we get to a situation where there's not a lot of listening going on, there's a lot of, you know, transmit because they're holding down the mic uh, that's a problem, right? And so, but we look for vendors that listen to what we have to say um, and partner with us to make the solution work for us uh, in our environment, and as well as making some recommendations without trying to shove the uh, the vendor pill down our throat. So, um, so we're really happy with that. And I would probably say too, one other point on here is is cost is a, is a is a significant consideration. As a guy who pays an, a, just a, a criminal amount of money in taxes. Uh, I really, um, I really get upset when I watch just sort of the, what the feds call fraud, waste and abuse. I don't know if the state or the local government calls it that, but that's what I call it. Fraud, waste and abuse, uh, just, just burning cash. Like there's no tomorrow while at the same time saying, you know, we don't have a lot of money. I'm like, well, you sure do spend an awful lot of money on stuff. That's not really, <laughs> you, you have no problems with that. So, uh, but we, we have to be really careful and we have to be good stewards of taxpayer money. And, um, so partnering with, with, with quality vendors is, is, is really key for us to make sure that we are being, uh, good stewards of taxpayer money. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think all of us can agree with that as, uh, as taxpayers. So, so, um, yeah, th th thanks for that. And, um, you know, your, both of your comments, um, certainly ring true with me and, and um, uh, may maybe where I would um, change focus uh, uh, or just to, you know, add an additional comment. Um, you know, CrowdStrike, we see trilli trillions of events every week. And um, interestingly, the adversary, uh, the landscape has changed, right? I mean, they'll, they'll go after, I mean, certainly they're targeted pieces and I get your point um, about that, Shannon, but but uh, targeted organizations that are much more heavily um, impacted. But with, with e-crime taken off, I mean, they're just looking to get a couple of bucks from anybody. And, uh, and you know, sure, bigger is better, but, um, um, but if, you know, they, they can scrape 
you know, something with a few fewer zeros from, from a bunch of smaller companies, we've seen them do that as well. So it, it's mm-hmm. really, it's really been um, kind of heart wrenching to, to watch all of this. Um, so, so, um, so let's, let's move to uh, looking ahead. Um, you know, ha- how are you guys identifying the most critical initiatives to, to tackle next? And, and Shannon, we'll, we'll go back to you. Um, so what we've done here at the city is, uh, actually when I got here in 2019, I tried very, I really made a valiant effort not to start just sort of changing stuff. But when I right. was kind of looking around, I was like, Ooh, <laughs> we really need to get this, some of this stuff changed <laughs> like now. Uh-huh. And, uh, so, uh, with, with the arrival of the Rona or the vid, um, um, when I got my deputy, I'm like, hey, we really need to focus on risk management. And, and specifically, we need to adopt a framework like now um, because we have an audit group that's just sort of randomly, well, it appears to me that it's random, auditing different things and then, and then basically kind of dumping those audits onto the CIO and here, go do this. And I'm just like, well, well, how do we know this is the most critical thing, right? And right. we're really spending our time on some of this. And it was just, you know, and that was like one example, and there's a lot of other ones. But um, so we had, I, um, adopted the NIST 853 medium mm-hmm. controls framework uh, with the um, security control framework on kind of the perimeter, uh, because we have all kinds of like juicy, you know, data like HIPAA and vanilla PII, um, you know, PCI stuff. And, um, and so rather than play uh, compliance whack-a-mole, uh, I, I'm like, hey, maybe here's a, here's a radical idea. Uh, why don't we just um, start, you know, kind of doing what we're supposed to be doing, uh, following a framework, and then we're not playing, you know, HIPAA whack-a-mole uh, or PCI whack-a-mole. And I remember we went up to the, um, the city manager's office one day and you know, we were sort of me and the CIO kind of being dragged in front of them, sort of holding some sort of court. And, uh, and I said, well, Hey, you know what, sir? Um, you know, target was PCI compliant when they got hit, they were compliant. I go, but their security program was garbage. Mm -hmm. Right. And then they had lots of indicators that there was something bad going on. And sure enough, they got hit with their third party HVAC company and came back through the network and, uh, but don't worry, they're PCI compliant. And I go, we are spending so much time being PCI compliant that we're completely ignoring like 95% of the rest of this. And he's like, oh, you know, and that was the first time I think he had heard something like that, which is good uh, in some ways. And, um, and so we were able to kind of refocus our efforts to, you know, we're, we're continuing to look at PCI, of course, but we're looking at, you know, what are our biggest uh, challenges right now? And, uh, and so now we're looking at, you know, something really simple. I get, we go to a lot of these um, panels and they say, you know, uh, you know, wh- what do you think the biggest threats are? And I'm like, well, it's the same threat that we've always had. It's the ABCs. It's, we're not doing the basics. So, yeah, you're going right. to have an adversary like an APT go after something super, you know, high tech like uh, the solar winds uh, supply chain attack. But, but that's, th- those are sort of the, the outliers. Like what's really happening is you, you, we have really crummy security programs with the exception of gens. And, um, and, uh, and so we are, uh, you know, and, and so we, we really need to focus on the basics. Go back to the basics, do your ABCs, right? Um, master those first before you're trying to do all this other, you know, super glorious stuff. And I said, so right now I, we're looking at uh, hitting next our asset management, hardware, software, because it's sort of, ad hoc, I guess, um, really get control of our, our quite bloated uh, software portfolio um, and then hit the uh, privilege access management next. So those, those two oh, are that's three a big one. sort of, yeah, those all, well, all three of them are big. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. You know, yeah. And, but those are, those, those have a significant um, attack surface. Uh, you get control of that and it starts reducing it. We don't need an attack surface the size of a continent. I'd like a small Hawaiian Island. If we can, if we can, if we could do that, that would be great. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, get, getting our arms around identity is, uh, I, I hope it's something that we as an industry can say, you know, like we've done in the last decade with, uh, you having something that finally runs on the endpoint. Um, that, uh, that, you know, through partnership, 
um, that we can get there with with uh, identities as as well. And certainly, privileged access management is is a key piece of that. Um, all right. So so uh, continuing with this, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it to you, Jen. Um, you know, to to talk a little bit about what's what's coming next and uh, how you're leveraging you know kind of zero trust principles. And Shannon, thanks for teeing her up. You know, hardening the endpoint identity, network access, all those kinds of things to, to drive innovation and modernization. Yeah, so I think for us, it's been really difficult because we have over 36,000 state of Arizona employees um, sprinkled through over 80 agencies, individual agencies. And a lot of these agencies have their own IT staffs, their own information security staff. So trying to build platforms that can be used across the enterprise. Um, we're doing the same thing with um, access management. Uh, we just onboarded uh, using Tanium. And what we're looking for is vendor partners that leverage one another. And I think that's also been really helpful. So looking at cross-platform solutions like Zscaler, uh, CrowdStrike, Tanium, um, I think also our CrowdStrike account team actually used to work at Tanium. So that's been really helpful, which is it unexpected. Is. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think, and the other thing is, you know, we're just really good at onboarding solutions. I mean, you got a solution, we'll get it rolled out to everyone and set it and forget it. But what we're finding is that we're not really good at building out those solutions the way that they need to be used. So, um, we are trying to wrap our arms more around that governance piece. We have a multi-agency committee that we bring together um, to discuss what is the best practice? What are we trying to get out of this new software solution, this new security solution that we've implemented? Um, and how, how is it best configured for each of our environments and how do we get visibility into everything across the board? And um, it's really difficult, but um, working with the other agencies, they've been generous with their time and providing resources so that we can work on it together. Um, also, any solutions that have multi-tenancy where we can have um, multiple entities logging into the same platform and share information across those, um, I think it just makes us stronger. Um, and all of these tools that help us with that um, remote assets, because assets are everywhere now. We have mobile devices, we have computers. I mean, we don't even know where half the stuff is sometimes, but this is really, these solutions are really helping us get a handle on that. I love what, what uh, both of you had to say on you know, kind of the ecosystem of solutions. And you mentioned some of the you know, key partners, even of, of uh, you know, CrowdStrikes with, with their Proofpoint, Zscaler, things like that, that are really helping drive uh, what we call a better together story, you know, Tanium and CrowdStrike, same, same kind of same kind of mm -hmm. a thing. Um, where uh, one of the things that we're continuously investing in is um, capabilities that make it so we do more of the integration, you know, so that uh, yeah. each each individual um, agency, company, institution doesn't have to do it on their own. So, um, so so love your love your thoughts on that. Yeah, so, you know, oh, where are you going? Oh. <laughs> We got somebody joining the conversation. Uh, so, so um, uh, as we uh, get towards the back part of this, and we'll open it up for questions in a moment. I want to give each one of you a chance for for some you know final final thoughts for uh, uh, for this audience and um, on uh, you know anything that's come to mind you know through the conversation here uh, today or just other things you'd like to to mention. So, so Jen, why don't we start with you? So one of the things that, um, Tina, you've done is you've introduced us to some of our state partners who are also CrowdStrike um, customers. And that's been really helpful um, because it's difficult to get those contacts. There's a lot of turnover in state government and it's just difficult to understand who's in what role. So you making those introductions has been so helpful. Um, we met up with the state of Oklahoma to hear about some of the things that they're doing. And since that initial meeting, we've been meeting on a regular cadence just to swap stories about our different um, software solutions that we're using. They had just, um, for onboarding to Zscaler, Zscaler was something we just purchased and we were able to um, have some collaboration around that. 
Uh, they're also highly uh, interested in the new state grant that uh, the state of Arizona has been heading, which is vendor compliance for cloud vendors. And I was able to connect them with our state privacy officer and get more information on that state ramp process. So these um, partnerships extend beyond just the, the vendor customer. And when we're able to, to make those connections with our colleagues in other states, I think it just, it makes us all stronger. Um, cybersecurity is a team sport. So we, and hopefully we're all on the same team. So uh, well, I hope just, so. yeah, just uh, meeting up with your teammates has been really helpful. Yeah, well, well, uh, you know, that's a great point, Jen. And, and uh, can we tell the audience the, uh, the acronym? Is that an okay? Yeah, so it's, help, um, help up, yeah, it's Texas, Arkansas, Colorado, and Oklahoma, and they call themselves TACO, and they do their threat briefs on Tuesdays, so they have TACO Tuesdays, and it's it's so brilliant, and I think we're just seeing more of these um, multiple state collaborations, because I think people are realizing we're stronger together, the adversary is working together, why shouldn't we be working together? Right, right, and, and I I love I love your story there uh, because it's it's so true. It, you know, there's a technology component, but at the end of the day, it's about people connections to make all this work. You get, you both have highlighted that um, amazingly well over the the course of this session, and I'm really curious to see how you know Taco gets expanded at another A, right? To uh, to yeah, the, I want to be A there. squared. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so maybe so. maybe you could expand it to burrito or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any bees things, but uh, it could, it could get interesting. <laughs> oh, taco cat, yeah. Right, right. One. There you go. <laughs> so, so uh, Shannon, um, coming to you for for some additional thoughts here. Yeah, I would just say uh, in closing, you know, this is um, you know the, the uh, bad guys are sort of moving at the speed of light. Um, so, so while this is sort of a marathon, it's more like a marathon while we're sprinting and. Uh, you know, and it's just sort of the nature of the game. Um, and so, um, you know, but you have to, you have to be able to kind of disconnect from a lot of this sometimes um, and not get so wrapped around the axle that you become, you know, like uber stressed out and just, uh, and it frequently, it, it frequently, um, uh, you know, kind of exacerbates, you know, sort of an already sort of tenuous situation. Uh, but when we, so that's, that's point number one. Point number two is when we're looking at um, when we're looking at technology, it's really easy just to start trying to buy everything. Every time, you know, a vendor pops up, we're like, hey, we want to sell you this widget. Look at this shiny thing. We can do this. We can do that. They're really good with word salad and and just carpet bombing you with a with a with it's just just tons of, of vendor acronyms, you know, and it's just. Um, but if you if you sort of start with the end in mind, I mean, because I'm a big believer in the seven habits because um, uh, it's just kind of easy to remember it, right? Uh, but if you start with the end in mind, what problem are you trying to solve? Uh, and then kind of work it from that, from that direction. And then to Jen's point uh, and, 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 um, and your point, Tina, you know, it's the people piece that, that really helps. So once you figure out what your problem is, you're trying to solve, because Jen can't help me with that. And Tina, right. you can't help me. Well, you guys, I guess Tina, you could try, uh, but you know, City of Phoenix has to solve our, we have to identify our own problem and then, and then, and then kind of work through it. And again, that goes back to that, that framework. Uh, and then once we, once we have it, that can reach out to Jen and Tim and Tina and say, Hey, we're trying to solve this next issue. What have you guys seen? And, and again, you know, we're also looking at Tanium uh, right now. Yeah. And so it's really great to hear that, that Arizona, I mean, I already kind of knew it, but it's great that Arizona is using it. Uh, um, cause we're going to probably call you up soon, Jen, cause I'm going to say, Hey, we have this specific use case. And again, they have like 20 parts to this thing, but we're, Hey, well, let's look at two or three tops and then let's master that and move to the next thing. And so that would probably be my, my parting thoughts here is just don't try to, don't try to eat the elephant all at once. Uh, cause you're, you're bound to choke on it and, and no Heimlich maneuver is going to save you. So just, um, you know, kind of go low and slow, make sure you're actually solving the problem rather than just spending money needlessly, getting a bunch of junk that you don't, you're not even really using it. Now you're wasting, you know, money and you're not, and, right. you're, and you're not solving the issue. So. Yeah, no, that's great. And, and uh, you know, with, with these, with these partnerships and uh, you, both of you commented on Tanium, I've heard them 
it come up in conversations many times um, the, this this week. Um, but there really is this you know better together um, story, and and um, you know that there's a you know all these different teams you know, trying to build capabilities that are helpful for uh, you know each of your organizations to to solve today's challenges. And and at the end of the day, for uh, for us, we we live by this one ten sixty model. You know, take a minute to to detect uh, you know, an event, ten minutes to analyze it, and an hour to a fully remediated. And um, if we could all uh, get get to that point, we would we would go so far to uh, um, stopping uh, adversarial activity. So we got a question in the chat, and uh, for those of you listening in, feel free to drop uh, more questions in as we answer this one. Um, so Jennifer's, you know, commenting on you know, all these different software solutions, you know, um, make it you know, makes it interesting to use them, much less protect them. So um, how do each one of you address the challenge of multi-solution software support? So, so I'm, I'm hearing the vendor complexity kind of, kind of angle here. Either one of you like to comment on that? So what we do in our initial, um, when we're looking at new products, we do a pretty varied um, proof of concept, proof of value with the vendor. And we want to make sure that uh, we're vetting uh, support and also that integration with our other solutions. So that's something that we're always looking for. Um, but again, if, you're, if you can find vendors that are partnering with other vendors, that makes it really helpful because you, they don't want to disappoint one another. You don't want to be saying, well, it's, you know, it's CrowdStrike and Crowd, you know, CrowdStrike is saying, oh no, it's Tanium. You know, we really want to bring everyone to the table. Um, and if they're already partners, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, I would, I would agree uh, with that. Um, when we do our evaluation, uh, we also look at, you know, how, how is this going to be supported long-term? So we just, we gutted our, um, our SIM uh, and we did it because we, our old SIM provider basically wanted us to have a wholly separate data center just for all their data lakes, which became data oceans. And as soon as it was water worlds. Swamps. Yeah, oh, well, <laughs> water world, world is better. This is like the Kevin Costner movie, right? There's no land. It's just data lakes everywhere. And I'm like, okay, we cannot have another data center for this. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> and then... Uh, uh, so, so it is, it is complex and I think it was a pretty good question. Um, but you know, you, you have to take that into account when you're, um, uh, when you're bringing these, these software on board. So like, as an example, one of the things we did with CrowdStrike was, uh, we addressed, you know, so CrowdStrike, uh, they do updates periodically. There's some like minor ones and then there's some larger ones. And so how do we make sure that these are being tested and how is this going to work in a 30 department sort of, I mean, not every department has their own thing going on, but, but the, the, some of the, the federated departments like aviation, police, fire, water, um, and then ITS, obviously. And uh, so, you know, we, we kind of set that up to make sure that we had uh, the ability to test new versions coming out, make sure that there's, it's not buggy. And CrowdStrike is really good about making sure the stuff's not buggy, but at the end, it's software with thousands and millions of lines of code. So inevitably, there might be something in there, um, like Microsoft. And um, so, uh, you know, so we, we make sure that this that this is this whole process is built in before we go head first in uh, with it with a new product. And just sort of one example of, of how we do things at the city. That, that's a great point, Shannon. And uh, yeah, I've never seen a DevSecOps machine like the CrowdStrike machine turning out updates in code. But uh, but you're you're right. Um, aggressive testing needs to happen on on uh, all, all sides of all sides of these things. Um, so so we're nearing the end. Um, I wanted to give anyone else in the audience a moment to uh, to chime in with a, a question. And Jen, I want to make sure we address yours. Uh, so any any other questions from the audience, feel free to come off mute or drop something in the, um, drop anything else in the chat. You're very welcome um, for today's session. Kevin, I uh, I can turn it back to you to, uh, to, to close things out, if that makes sense. Thank you, Tina. That was a fantastic talk. Actually, I uh, potentially have a question. Okay. If there's any like general industry effort for standardized uh, formatting for integrations between tools, 
because I know with, with all the developments in the current industry, there's uh, kind of too many problems for any one company to address with like a multi-tool, one-stop shop type situation. So is there any I hope not. effort towards standardization of integrations? Honestly, that, I think that's a good question, but I hope not. Uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm very pro capitalism. Right. And so I want, I do not want the government involved any more than they already are. So um, I do not want, I, I, sometimes a standardization, you start, you, you know, as, as the attacks increase and the complexity and they're, they're, you know, we're pivoting from, you know, web-based attacks. Now it's, now we're attacking passwords. Now we're going after the cloud. I mean, it just keeps changing, changing, changing. And, and this cyber, um, uh, security vendor industry is is always evolving, and the good the good vendors stick around, and the other ones um, that might be good may kind of get gobbled up uh, by larger w ones because the, you know like let's say Cisco, so Cisco they they don't really have an MFA until they gobbled up Duo, and now they kind of lock it in. So so that th those kinds of of constantly shifting sands, if you will, uh, I think help meet it. Um, but uh, I, I want to rely on um, the, the brain power of, of private industry to solve these problems. And I, cause I don't think there's any, you know, I don't think there's any, there's any singular way to, to, to stop any of this. Uh, um, but some, some have really, uh, really inventive ways of doing things, whereas others, you know, um, are sort of following sort of old school practices. And if we get kind of pigeonholed or focused and just doing it a certain way, I think it's, I think we're going to lose in the long run. Just my, my, my two cents. Yeah, and I would agree as well. I think what we look for is making sure that any solution we're implementing has um, API capabilities. And that kind of gives us the keys to the kingdom to, um, to have that sort of standardized platform. If we want to pull data out, um, we have the access via API. If we want to do management um, via a script, we use API. So for me, I feel like that's kind of the way that you can manage these multiple disparate solutions um, is through API. I'm glad you mentioned That's, that, Jen. Go ahead, Kevin. I was just going to mention that one of the first projects I uh, worked on when I was hired back when uh, Tina was still with us uh, was API integrations with uh, pulling data in and out of uh, risk sense, which is one of our scanning. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar. <laughs> <laughs> So it was, a, it was a great question, uh, Kevin, and um, I, I think I echo the same comments. What I would add to that is that um, I, I think instead of additional standards, it really goes back to the onus is on technology partners to make the integration um, more fully baked. So it's, it's easier for you know, every organization or agency to, uh, to pick and choose. You know, it, with CrowdStrike, we've got the CrowdStrike store, very much like the AWS marketplace. We also show up on the AWS marketplace. So once you're a customer of you know, one um, one piece of this larger ecosystem. Um, it's our job to make it easier for you to stand up. You know, other other components as uh, as the need is there. Help promote uh, accessibility to the end consumer. Absolutely, absolutely. Because you know, the the easier we can make it to deploy the technology, the more time you know e each one of us within our own organizations can spend actually working out process and people and culture you know, kinds of things to, um, you know, to, to uh, you know, continue this you know, cyber resiliency improvement, you know, continuous improvement cycle. Well, uh, thank you all for your time. That was a wonderful presentation. Uh, we're at time, well, a minute away from time. Uh, so if there's uh, no more closing comments from the audience or questions, I'm gonna close the meeting. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks okay. all. all right. Thanks, Jen and thank Shannon. You. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Shannon. Thank Thanks, you. Tina. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jeff. Bye. Thanks.